A very big hi to all of you children. I am Uma Sudhir. Welcome to study with Sudhir. आपने ट्रांसपरेशन का पहला पार्ट जो चैप्टर है आपके बायोलॉजी के टेक्स्ट बुक में उसका पहला पार्ट आपने सुधीर सर के साथ किया था अब मैं दूसरा पार्ट आपको समझाने जा रही हूँ ट्रांसपरेशन क्या होता है ट्रांसपरेशन वो होता है जो पानी प्लांट से निकलता है उसको ट्रांसपरेशन कहते हैं इवेपरेट होता है वो प्लांट से लेकिन इवेपरेशन और ट्रांसपरेशन में फर्क भी है उसके बारे में भी हम बात करेंगे पहली बात यह है कि ट्रांसपरेशन इज दट which it comes out of the of the plant in the form of vapors and uh, you have learned about uh, uh, that there is transpiration first of all that the plants give out that water largely through the aerial surfaces whether it is the leaf or the stem the second part of it how to measure this transpiration you have spoken about uh, you know how to weigh uh, the plant and find out the difference in weight and that shows that there was transpiration that happened there is also the potometer that you learned about and now let's go to the kinds of transpiration that are there kinds of transpiration kahan kahan se pani nikalta hai paude se ek hai stomatal transpiration ek cuticular transpiration aur hai ek hai lenticular transpiration ye sab bade complicated words aapko lagte honge lekin bahut simple isliye hai ki stomatal transpiration yani ki stomata stomata kya hota hai stomata wo holes hote hain jo आपके लीव्स के ऊपर होते हैं ऊपर भी होते हैं नीचे भी होते हैं दरअसल नीचे बहुत ज्यादा होते हैं ऊपर कम होते हैं लीव के सरफेस के उसको कहते हैं स्टोमैटल ट्रांसपरेशन जो लीव से बनता है आपको बस ये चीज बता दूं, जैसे स्टोमैटा आपने सुना होगा ये स्टोमैटा का जो एनोटेशन एंड देन लेट्स गो टू दिस शो यू ओके यानी कि स्टोमैटा का जो स्ट्रक्चर है जो लीफ इस इस लीफ के ऊपर और नीचे बहुत सारे होल्स होते हैं और उसका स्ट्रक्चर ऐसे होता है बीन शेप्ड होता है और यहाँ पे जो पोर होती है ये ही है पोर और ये बहुत सारे पोर्स होते हैं आगे और पीछे यानी कि ऊपर और नीचे टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट टेन थाउजेंड पर स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर इतना छोटा सा उसमें uh, हजारों के की संख्या में पोर्स होते हैं उसको स्टोमैटल ट्रांसमिशन कहते हैं ट्रांसपरेशन कहते हैं फ्रॉम द लीव थ्रू द स्टोमैटा मेजर पार्ट ऑफ ट्रांसपरेशन अकर्स थ्रू द स्टोमैटा यानी कि जो ट्रांसपरेशन हम कहते हैं जो पानी रूट से निकाला जाता है और फिर एरियल सरफेस से एटमोस्फेयर हवा में छोड़ दी जाती है उसमें मैक्सिमम स्टोमैटल ट्रांसपरेशन होता है सेकेंड क्यूटिकुलर ट्रांसपरेशन क्यूटिकुलर ट्रांसपरेशन क्या है क्यूटिकल वो है जो लीफ के सरफेस पे एक लेदरी एक सरफेस होता है जो कि ट्रांसपरेशन को कम करने की कोशिश करता है यानी कि जो सरफेस ऑफ द लीफ है वहां से जो इवेपरेट होकर पानी निकलता है उसको क्यूटिकुलर ट्रांसपरेशन कहते हैं डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द सरफेस ऑफ द लीव एंड द स्टेम्स स्टेम्स पर भी क्यूटिकुल होता है और लीव पर भी तीसरा लेंटिकुलर ट्रांसपरेशन फ्रॉम लेंटिस माइन्यूट ओपनिंग ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ द ओल्ड स्टेम्स वॉट इज दैट on every on every uh, uh, stem you will have small kind of holes this is not like stomata they are just holes that are there in the stem and through that also you have evaporation of the water vapor which is actually the transpiration that happens that is happening so you have stomatal transpiration which happens through the leaf cuticular transpiration which directly happens through the surface of the leaf stomatal transpiration largely from the under surface of the leaves lower part of the leaf stomatal transpiration cuticular transpiration directly from the surface of the leaves and the stems lenticular transpiration is from the lenticels which are small holes on the stems which are minute openings on the surface of old stems from all these three types you can have transpiration maximum transpiration happens through stomata now coming to the next question i told you that there are uh, स्टोमैटा uh, दर आर देर इन दी टॉप ऑफ द लीफ एज वेल एज द बॉटम ऑफ द लीफ अगर पत्ता ऐसा है तो ऊपर भी स्टोमैटो होते हैं और नीचे भी होते हैं लेकिन बहुत सारे स्टोमैटो जो है नीचे को होते हैं ऊपर की तरफ इनफैक्ट क्यूटिकल आ जाता है और वो बहुत यूजली बहुत लेदरी सा एक सब्सटेंस होता है उसको हम क्यूटिकल कहते हैं बट लॉर्ड ऑफ स्टोमैटा आर देर इन द अंडर सर्फेस और यही वजह है कि बहुत सारा जो ट्रांसपरेशन है वो अंडर सर्फेस से होता है अनइक्वल ट्रांसपरेशन दैट मीन्स देर इज मच मोर ट्रांसपरेशन दैट हैपन्स फ्रॉम द अंडर सर्फेस ऑफ द लीव देन फ्रॉम द टॉप ऑफ द लीव बिकॉज देर आर मोस्ट मैटा ऑन द लोअर विच इज कॉल्ड द डॉर्सल पार्ट 
and then the upper which is called the ventral surface so dorsal surface ventral surface ventral surface less transpiration dorsal surface more transpiration hence there is unequal transpiration from the two sides of the leaf isko koi bhi science ki jo baat hai usko hum scientifically prove karna chahte hain to kya jab hum keh rahe hain ki bahut sare stomata niche hote hain humko aankhon mein se so directly to hum dekh nahi sakte hain kyunki bahut chote chote ye pores hote hain so how do we prove that there is more transpiration happening from the lower surface which is the dorsal surface then from the ventral surface which is the top surface let's see that so here we come this is the upper surface of the leaf a uh, one is the upper surface and one is the low surface i will show you how it is so what we do in an experiment is we take what is called a cobalt chloride paper it is blue in color usually without any exposure to moisture it is blue in color so you take a strip of the cobalt chloride and then you put clips aapke paas glass slides hote hain na laboratory mein jaise glass slides mein hum स्लाइड्स बनाते हैं तो उस स्लाइड्स में आप बीच में इस पेपर को रख दीजिए और फिर यू पुट क्लिप्स ऑन बोथ साइड सो यू कैन सील द पेपर दिस साइड एज वेल एज दी अदर साइड कोबार क्लोराइड पेपर ऑन द अपर सर्फेस एंड ऑन द लोअर सर्फेस बोथ साइड्स यू आर पुटिंग इट एंड यू लीव इट फॉर अ फ्यू आवर्स एक्सपेरिमेंट टू प्रूव दैट मोर ट्रांसपेरेशन टेक्स प्लेस इन द लोअर सर्फेस यूजिंग कोबार क्लोराइड पेपर सो कोबार क्लोराइड पेपर टर्न पिंक ऑन द लोअर सर्फेस बट रिमेन्स ब्लू on the upper surface it may remain blue on the upper surface for a longer time but if you leave it for a very long time but uh, for because transpiration also happens from the upper surface that may also eventually turn pink but initially it is the lower surface which will turn pink because lot more transpiration happens from the uh, lower surface so three things in this characters in this cobalt chloride blue paper has to turn pink when it is exposed to moisture that moisture is coming in the form of transpiration from the leaf and more transpiration happens on the lower surface than on the upper surface and therefore the lower paper turns pink much earlier than the upper surface now what we spoke about earlier what are stomata and uh, how does the transpiration happen through stomata this is a very important aspect of this lesson so what are stomata i told you stomata are very small holes that are there in the leaves you can't see them holes means they are pores that are there that lead to the inner part of the leaf and what happens through them is very important things happen through the stomata photosynthesis ke liye jo gases chahiye aap jante hain ki photosynthesis mein carbon dioxide ko liya jata hai aur oxygen ko bahar choda jata hai that's what photosynthesis does and that's why we think the plants are also very important for our atmosphere because we get oxygen from the plants but what does it do it takes carbon dioxide and it makes sugar and it also releases oxygen doesn't it so stomata are those pores through which the air goes inside the carbon dioxide goes inside and the water vapor comes out so what are stomata stomata are actually this is the opening this is a stomata this entire thing you can call as a stomata this is a stoma or a stomatal pore and there are two kidney shaped cells that are there which are called guard cells guard kya hota hai the person who guards your building jaise home guard hai jo uh, suraksha ke liye hote hain security guards hain aapke building mein so that is the way the guard cell is going to protect or ensure the plant remains safe gets enough water safeguards the water when required and allows the water to go out in the form of water vapor when there is too much of water so guard cells what do these guard cells do they are thicker on the inside and they are thinner outside so what happens is when uh, these uh, these guard cells also have why are they green in color because they have chloroplast chloroplast kya hote hain usme chlorophyll hota hai jisse photosynthesis is possible so photosynthesis will happen in these guard cells when photosynthesis happens what happens sugar comes yes that's right so sugar comes and therefore there is a lot of sugar here because of the sugar it will absorb a lot of water these uh, the uh, uh, the solute here becomes more isn't it so it will absorb water because the solute is very concentrated here when it absorbs water the cell becomes more turgid and it kind of expands and when it expands it takes this kidney shape and a hole is formed in between this is the stomatal pore what happens when the water is uh when the stomata wants to close then you know when the carbon dioxide um when the at night when there is no photosynthesis to happen what happens is 
this uh, turgidity is lost the so water is lost turgidity is lost the shape of the cell closes down and this comes together and no air can pass through so this stomata will close during the night time during day time this will be open so this is an open stomata and this is a closed stomata so what are we saying minute openings in the epidermal layer epidermal layer is the outer layer of anything is called the epidermis so epidermal layer of the leaves is stoma is surrounded by two bean shaped guard cells guard remember security guard like that the guard cells during day the stomata are wide open for intake of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis remember three things only it is there first in the epidermal layer there are bean shaped shell cells and they are thicker on the inside only then when they expand what happens is this side opens up more because of it this stoma will open up so what happens water from the root goes to the stem and to the leaf tissues through the veins right that's what we read through the xylem is what the water comes through a large number of spongy mesophyll cells in the leaves have their surfaces exposed to the intercellular spaces so what happens is uh, when the water comes to the leaf oh, i'll just explain to you the structure of this this is the cuticle on top after which you have the upper epidermis this is the palisade meso mesophyll cells they are all uh, rectangular tall as you can see this is a spongy mesophyll what is a spongy mesophyll that which has a lot of intercellular spaces and is spongy therefore is called spongy mesophyll so what happens is in between all these uh, layers the water that comes comes through the veins and then it uh, comes into the mesophyll and then a lot of it is in fact on the surfaces of these cells what happens is uh, when the water is when the water uh, has entered this uh, uh, the leaf uh, it comes through the veins and then in these cell cells what happens is a lot of turgor pressure turgor pressure means what the pressure that the cell cytoplasm the protoplasm exerts on the wall is called turgor pressure the opposite pressure which the wall exerts on the cell is called wall pressure what we are talking about here is turgor pressure the cytoplasm inside exerts pressure on the wall and because of that the water comes out of these cells and a lot of intercellular spaces are filled with that water so a lot of actually when the movement of the water happens a lot of it happens due to imbibition imbibition means what the dry surfaces of the cellulose or of the uh, surface of the walls all or the cell walls of the plants they absorb water by imbibition just by absorbing the water and not through any other process like osmosis so there is also a little bit of osmosis that happens and a lot of imbibition happens because of which water comes into these areas and then from the intercellular spaces where the water is there it enters into this area what is that area called the surfaces of the cells give out water as thin film this water evaporates and the water vapors vapor saturates the intercellular spaces means this area which is all the area in between this soft mesophyll that is filled with a lot of water vapor and then the uh, the saturation of water vapor molecules there is very high and therefore it comes first to the substomatal space substomatal space is this is a place where the stomata is going to be there in this place is where it comes so now if the concentration of water vapor is much higher inside and the concentration of water vapor is much lower here then through a simple process of diffusion diffusion means what water go or whichever the uh, material the molecules move from a place which has high concentration to a place that has low concentration that is diffusion so if there is a lot of water vapor that's come to the substomatal space then it will come out into the through the stomata into the atmosphere and that is all the transpiration is what happens once again from the root to the stem to the leaf tissue you know it's coming through the xylem ascent of sap and then through imbibition and through osmosis into the leaf through the veins into the leaves and then spreading into the mesophyll because of imbibition and also some bit of osmosis then it is occupying a thin film is occupying the mesophyll uh, cells on top of the mesophyll cells there is a thin layer of water that gets converted into water vapor which which uh, occupies a lot of these intercellular spaces then there's a lot of water vapor in this area because of the heat as well 
and that water vapor because the concentration of water vapor in the substratal space is more than outside therefore through a process of diffusion it moves out okay so it then reaches the substratal space from where it escapes through the stomata so the entire movement of water vapor from the surface of the cell to the outside atmosphere is the result of diffusion so it's a process of diffusion through which the water from the surface of the cells which are these cells mesophyll spongy mesophyll cells have that thin layer of water outside their cell wall that becomes water vapor and then it comes out of the stomata because of diffusion diffusion is what going from a place of high concentration to a place of low concentration so molecules of water vapor move from region of higher concentration to region of low concentration so once more we'll just see this what happens here movement of water through the leaf so move by osmosis some amount of water goes in like this it is moving there then there are the intercellular spaces then xylem uh, vessels are there xylem vessels are the ones which are actually getting you water into the leaf and then it is moving into these cells and by movement of by evaporation it comes into the substratal space from where it escapes out through the uh, stoma stoma is where the stomata is present the stoma is the opening that is called this uh, stoma and then water most water travels along the cell walls by imbibition so maximum quantity travels inside the cell i mean from the stem when it is coming it's all coming through the xylem but most water travels along the cell walls when they are traveling along the cell walls it is by imbibition after coming from the xylem vessel then evaporation from the cell walls the thin film which is there that can evaporate and becomes water vapor i told you most comes by imbibition small water enter cells by osmosis that is where the water is going in here most of it is through imbibition and then the water vapor is escaping out and this is called transpiration okay so now why do leaves of some plants wilt during midday and recover in the mid e uh, in the evening this is a very interesting uh, query you yourself would have observed it one you, when you don't give water of course the plant wilts why does a plant wilt because it's not able to keep as much water inside it as it is losing so if it is losing more water than what it is able to get then the plant will wilt because turgidity is lost what is turgidity the stiffness of the cells which is there that is lost very often you know in the petiole petiole is what the base of the leaf is called petiole in that they lose turgidity and therefore the leaf becomes you know it falls like this it it is no longer able to stand erect so they will despite the presence of water in soil because the rate of transpiration during the day exceeds the rate of absorption of water by the roots by the roots and therefore they lose turgidity so when jab zyada pani transpiration se nikal jata hai aur utna sara pani plant absorb nahi kar pata apne root se tab plant wilt ho jayega aur iska ek example hai balsam jo pani hone ke bawajood presence ke bawajood pani ke presence ke bawajood wilt hota hai kyunki jitna pani transpiration se nikal raha hai usse bahut kam wo root se le pa raha hai apne andar so in the evening stomata are constricted temperature is not high so no loss of water through transpiration so leaves become erect so what happens in the evenings the stomata are closed so you don't lose that much of water vapor the temperature is not so high so the water does not become water vapor and does not evaporate that fast and therefore the leaves become more erect because they they regain their turgidity now this is a second type what type what are the three types we saw stomatal transpiration cuticular transpiration and lenticel through the lenticels lenticular transpiration so cuticular transpiration is cuticle i told you is that waxy layer secreted by the epidermis and it prevents evaporation of water from the leaf surface more thick the cuticle is lesser the evaporation so what happens in plants that are there in the deserts they have will have a thick cuticle so that the evaporation is less and they can conserve water because pani bahut kam hota hai जो डेजर्ट होता है वहां पर पानी बहुत कम होता है और इसलिए जैसे कैक्टस है जैसे आपने देखा होगा उसमें कैक्टस में एक्चुअली जो हमको ग्रीन कलर हरा कर रंग का जो दिखता है ना शो यू ओके इफ यू टेक अ कैक्टस 
आपने ये देखा होगा जैसे ऐसे ऐसे होते हैं कैक्टस के ट्रीज के लीव्स और उसमें ऐसे ऐसे कुछ टॉन्स होते हैं है ना तो दिस इज एक्चुअली अस्टेम दिस थिक थिंग दैट यू सी इज एक्चुअली अस्टेम एंड दीज थॉन्स आर एक्चुअली लीव्स the leaves have been modified into thorns so that there is minimal loss of water because where does cactus grow cactus grows in deserts where there is water is very minimal and therefore that happens with cactus you uh, uh, you uh, that's why they have also have a thick cuticle the uh, plants that are growing in deserts they have a thick cuticle so that less transpiration happens now lenticels lenticels is small openings that are there on the stems itself old stems there are small openings and there there is no regulation unlike stomata which can close during the night or they can close when there are adverse kind of conditions and opens when it wants to do photosynthesis or it wants to give out water that kind of thing is not there in lenticels lenticels are always open but they are much fewer in number so we don't have to worry too much about the transpiration that happens through them lenticels are special openings that develop on the older stem in place of stoma they never close they are always open remember that they allow diffusion of gases both for respiration and photosynthesis even uh, uh, they are allowing respiration and photosynthesis and water from the cell surfaces directly facing the lenticel evaporates ye kaisa hota hai if i just were to draw for you See if there is a stem like this, then it will be directly on that surface, the hole, the lenticels. So, जो cells यहाँ पे हैं, वहाँ से ही पानी निकल के चला जाता है. उसको regulate करने के लिए जैसे closure and opening नहीं होता है. In the case of lenticels, okay. So, transpiration is more cuticular, but less than transpiration is more than cuticular. बट लेस देन स्टोमैटल यानी कि मेन जो ट्रांसपरेशन होता है वो स्टोमैटल होता है सेकेंड इज लेंटिक्यूलर एंड थर्ड इज क्यूटिकल सो इट इज मोर देन क्यूटिकुलर बट लेस देन स्टोमैटो फैक्टर्स विच अफेक्ट ट्रांसपरेशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इट हैज ए लॉट ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस फॉर अदर रीजन एज वेल यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वाई फैक्टर्स विच अफेक्ट ट्रांसपरेशन देर कैन बी इंटरनल फैक्टर्स एंड देर कैन बी एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर्स एज वेल Okay, these are the factors. We are going to look at the factors one by one. Intensity of sunlight, जो बहुत सारा धूप है, when the temperature is very high, what happens? The tree appears to wilt, doesn't it? Because there is a lot of water loss that happens. It happens to human beings also, isn't it? जैसे हम जब हम धूप में निकलते हैं तो बहुत हमें प्यास लगती है क्योंकि पानी गला सूख जाता है कहते हैं ना वैसे ही the plant also you see during day the stomata are open to help inward diffusion of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis at night they are closed so more transpiration occurs during the day and when cloudy stomata partially are closed so it reduces transpiration so when intensity of the sunlight is high transpiration is also high during night the stomata close um, the uh, you know yeah, when the sunlight is there for the carbon dioxide for making photos for making food for photosynthesis also the stomata will open to take in more carbon dioxide and therefore a lot of transpiration loss will happen water will be lost during when the intensity of sunlight is high similarly when the temperature is high then the evaporation from the leaves is more and therefore transpiration is more just remember these three factors intensity of sunlight temperature and velocity of wind is directly proportional means what more sunlight more transpiration more temperature more transpiration more velocity of wind more transpiration why velocity of wind more transpiration can you tell me yeah so what happens is when the velocity of the wind is high what happens is uh, we saw in the previous diagram it depends upon diffusion the amount of moisture or humidity that is there outside so you have uh, when you when when the water vapor is coming out if there is a lot of velocity of wind it pushes away the vapor that's come out so again you have dry wind there and therefore there will be more diffusion of water vapor outside and therefore when the velocity of wind is high then you have more of transpiration as well these are three factors sunlight temperature velocity directly proportional to transpiration when these increase transpiration also increases the next three factors humidity carbon dioxide and atmospheric pressure are inversely proportional when humidity is more what happens exactly the opposite of when i told you velocity 
humidity is more means lot of water molecules are there in the atmosphere and therefore the transpiration when process will get slowed down because the diffusion will be slow from inside the water uh, leaves uh, spaces where the water vapor is that outside because if already outside there is a lot of water vapor then the water vapor from inside the leaf is not does not move out so if humidity is high then transpiration is low if humidity is low if it is a very dry atmosphere when it is sunny when it is hot you have less humidity isn't it if there is less humidity then there will be more transpiration carbon dioxide increase in carbon dioxide the normal level causes stomatal closure what happens is the normal uh, uh, amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is 0.03 percent if that increases then the stomata will close and therefore the transpiration will also become less similarly atmospheric pressure if the atmospheric pressure decreases in the atmosphere it increases to it leads to increase in the rate of transpiration and vice versa there are also internal or plant factors what are those internal or plant factors the water content that is present in the leaves supposing a plant is in very dry conditions and therefore the water content in the plant is less meaning the leaves already have less water then the transpiration will also become less in order to be able to conserve the water so this is a protective mechanism of the plant in very dry conditions we already earlier spoke about the cuticle or the absence of leaves or reducing the surface area of the leaves in order to conserve water similarly if there is less water content in the leaves mean meaning if the water absorbed by the leaves or by the roots is less and the leaves will also have less water then the leaves will wilt and transpiration is reduced and this is uh, directly due to the indirectly due to the closure of stomata it is indirectly due to the closure of stomata and it's a natural mechanism to conserve water within the plant now what does the plant do we already read about this what does it do to conserve water sometimes it will uh, large surface area means it will increase a lot of transpiration will happen and therefore it will decrease the surface area like we saw in the case of uh, the cactus where the leaf actually becomes a thorn or you have leaves which become uh, smaller in size and similarly you have a thick cuticle then you have lower rate of transpiration uh, just a question that is coming up we, we are we are going to talk about these structures uh, that help in conserving leaf structure etc how that will help to conserve the water in the leaves but how will the rate of transpiration be affected on a windy or a foggy day on a windy day the rate of transpiration increases because the velocity of the air is moving fast and the water vapor is taken away on a foggy day the rate of transpiration decreases because of high atmospheric moisture humidity lowers the rate of transpiration that is just a check to know how awake you are okay now coming back to this what we are talking about adaptation in the plants in order to reduce transpiration okay what we spoke about we spoke about the leaf adapting itself to have a thick cuticle or the leaf reducing its surface area sometimes the leaf will uh, curl and make it less surface area narrow leaves you can have there can also be things that you are not visible directly to the naked eye like the sunken stomata what does a sunken stomata mean meaning the stomata won't be on the surface of the leaf whether it's the dorsal or the ventral part but it will be slightly inside what is the protective protectiveness that comes from that you will have let of less of water vapor that escapes when you have sunken stomata and one of the examples for that uh, sunken stomata is actually a, a plant called merium look it up look up ye aapke aas paas bhi hai puja mein bahut kaam aata hai isko um, use kiya jata hai for uh, uh, its flowers are used for uh, things nerium it is called it's also called oleander so you can uh, look it up to know what this plant is and it has very narrow uh, should i say leaves and that is a way to conserve its water there are fewer stomata sometimes you can have less in number of stomata so that you can have less transpiration in order to conserve its water narrow leaves and thick cuticle or reduced expo uh, exposed surfaces like we spoke a short while ago okay
Now, next one. Significance of transpiration. What are the uses of transpiration first? Significance is very important because uh, these days we talk all the time about climate change and why forests are important and why we need to conserve trees. This is actually the big story of why it is important to have trees and why it is important to conserve forests. Because significance of transpiration, it affects climate. Why? Because when you have forest, you have, the, uh, you know, uh, your textbooks will mention that just one sunflower plant can give up as much as half liter of water. Just a maize plant gives up some couple of liters of water in a day. So you can imagine acres and acres of these plants and how much of water they're leaving out. And you'll have uh, an apple tree, for instance, they say gives up as much as 30 liters of water vapor outside okay so they are converting that water into vapor which becomes part of your uh, climate and therefore part of your clouds and therefore creating rainfall for you so therefore that's why we say forests are very important for our ecosystem other than of course their role in uh, the gases gaseous exchange and other things but forests are important because they bring rains so now we will talk about what is the usefulness? This is a, a world. How is, it, how is it useful for the world? That's what we spoke about here. Now we are going to talk about how it is going to be useful for uh, uh, the plant itself. How does it help the plant? It has a cooling effect. Don't we say when we sweat, garmi mein jab aap sweat karte ho, to body cool ho jati hai. So you become, actually, your body becomes cooler and even when... Uh, 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 you know, people are trying to reduce, uh, you know, you're trying to cool off. What does it do? The body sweats and your body will cool off. And uh, the reason to bring down the temperature of the body is also because when very high temperatures happen, for instance, in the human body, if the temperature exceeds 106, 107, 108, then all the enzymes in the body start acting very weird and they will malfunction and that can lead to very serious consequences. Similarly, so for plants also, cooling effects, evaporation reduces the temperature on the leaf surface. Whenever something evaporates, it has a cooling effect, isn't it? When you sweat, afterwards when you put on the fan, why do you feel cool? Because there's an evaporation that's happened and then your body has cooled off. So similarly for the plant as well, cooling will reduce the temperature of the plant during the summer season and therefore the enzymes etc. can function properly. The other important thing is when only when there is transpiration happening does the water can be absorbed from the root and it comes up with ascent of sap as we call it. And it is through that distribution of water that both uh, mineral salts are distributed all over the plant. So it's very important for the distribution of water as well as the mineral salts all over the plant. The third one is suction force. It helps in the ascent of sap by producing a suction force from the top of the plant. When there is a plant, let me just come back to you. For instance, if there is a tree here and then there is a tree like this, okay. So what happens? From here, there is a suction force that pulls it like this because of the transpiration, okay. So from the root, the suction force will make through these roots, the water will go up go up okay there could be some lenticels here but there are minuscule and then they will go up and they are able to distribute to all parts of the tree what happens so suction force makes an help in ascent of sap sap is what that liquid which has the mineral salts that have been absorbed from the soil as well so all that will go up because of the pressure suction force that is created by Transpiration. So that's a very important role that the transpiration plays. Okay, when plants lose water directly. Okay, now after transpiration, we come to two different other forms in which the plants are losing water. Okay, one is called guttation. G-U-T-T-A-T-I-O-N. Guttation. And the other one is called Bleeding, that's right. Bleeding is what? When uh, 
when you get a cut the blood flows out when you have an injury the blood flows out we call that bleeding isn't it similarly when the plant also gets cut and the sap comes out it's called bleeding when there's an injury it's called bleeding so when plants lose water directly in liquid form and not as water vapor it's called guttation and bleeding so in this case what is the difference between transpiration and guttation in transpiration the water goes out in the form of vapor in guttation the water goes out in the form of water itself in guttation the water goes out through what are called as hydathodes hydathodes whereas in transpiration the water largely goes out through what are called stomata it could be lenticular and cuticular transpiration as well but largely it is in the form of stomata whereas in guttation it is in the form of uh, it is through what are called hydathodes so let's just understand what is guttation and what is bleeding what happens is in very very humid conditions when there's a kind of a lot of water in the plant and uh, there is a uh, hydrostatic pressure that's built up inside the plant then how to you know water vapor is not the way to do it because water vapor uh, if you are to go for transpiration it's a much slower process whereas in guttation in a humid environment there is less transpiration but roots continue to absorb soil what happens when there is a lot of humidity there will be less of transpiration isn't it but the roots are continuing to absorb a lot of water this leads to a big hydrostatic pressure within the plant so it forces out excess water directly from the tips of veins of the leaves what happens is if there is a leaf so if there is a leaf like this through the veins whatever is coming from here itself the water will fall got it this water it's falling like this these are droplets of water that i'm trying to show directly as droplets of water the water is falling that's called guttation it happens in plants like banana in fact so guttation is where the water comes out in the form of water itself in transpiration it comes out in the form of a vapor so water is visible as droplets on the margins or vein endings of the leaves so it can be sometimes you know here also it can be coming out different kinds of leaves it may have different uh, it may take different uh, places okay guttation occurs uh, through hy hydathodes what i told hydathodes it occurs through hydathodes this is a long spelling okay guttation occurs through hydathodes special pore bearing structures present in the leaf margin common in banana and in strawberry so this is an important term to remember remember this word because they will ask you hydathodes what are hydathodes hydathodes are small pores at the ends of endings of uh, margins of the leaves and through which guttation happens guttation is directly throwing out water because a big hydrostatic pressure has built up inside the leaf and this is common in banana and in strawberry so let's go to the next one and uh, what is bleeding like i said bleeding is something where it happens due to injury and there's a lot of uh, there's a loss of water actually it is in the form of cell sap through a cut stem is called bleeding and root pressure generated by the plant assists in bleeding what does that mean if a plant say for instance accidentally gets uh, cut if a plant accidentally gets cut there's a nice looking plant here like this and then it's nicely uh, having plant leaves and so on and so forth accidentally it gets cut here so what happens is because it has a root system as well so what happens is the roots may be here okay from here the water starts oozing out because you have a cut here the water starts oozing out this is called bleeding that's because of the pressure created by the root uh, that is what the root pressure the root pressure of the root which is absorbing water still but this has no other place to go so it bleeds from here and therefore it's called bleeding i will also while we are at it tell you the important differences between evaporation and transpiration as well that is also an important aspect of your lesson because uh, what is evaporation evaporation is the loss of water okay and uh, it's a physical process it can happen from the surface of water uh, that's what we call as evaporation any surface in, from where it evaporates is called evaporation 
In transpiration, what happens is again it takes the form of a vapor, but it is both. It can be. Uh, it is also. It can also be a physical process. It also has a physical component in it, but it is happening from the aerial surface of the plant itself. The aerial surface of the plant is where it happens from. Uh, evaporation is very fast. Transpiration is much slower as well, and. Uh, uh, evaporation uh, can uh, take you know in physical objects we talk about and uh, in the plant the uh, the uh, transpiration is having many many different functions we saw the utilities of why the plant uh, uh, you know the transpiration why is it important for a plant it is helping in the pressure of acid of sap it is helping in distribution of uh, minerals it is giving um, you know that pressure to come from the root or uh, to the top of the plant so that you can have an erect appearance. The plants remain, so the, uh, the leaves remain turgid as well because of uh, water absorption and then, okay, so here we are seeing the difference between guttation and transpiration. Guttation is a process where water is lost from the leaves in the form of liquid droplets and yes, that's an important one. It occurs at night through the hydathodes. It can, can happen early morning or it can happen at night through the hydathodes. And it is an uncontrolled process. Why are we calling it an uncontrolled process? Because there is no stomata to, um, you know, stop or open the, allowing the transpiration to happen like the way it happens in transpiration. Transpiration as opposed to guttation, the water is again lost from the leaves, but in the form of water vapor. And it happens through the day and through stomata. And therefore, it is a controlled process. The other important uh, thing that I would like to point out is, uh, on the leaf, margins of the leaves, when you have water, it is not always guttation. On the surface of the leaf, sometimes we find water, isn't it? What is it called? Morning dew or dew. That is a process of condensation that does not have anything to do with the water inside the plant. What happens is, if it is very cold outside, the water, the water vapor in the atmosphere comes and condenses on the leaf and that condensation causes what we call as dew. So, it is the atmospheric water vapor that condenses on the leaf and that's called dew whereas guttation is water that's coming from inside the plant and coming out from the edges of the leaves through the veins and in the form of water droplets that's called guttation so difference is essentially to be known between guttation transpiration and what is morning dew okay so we are coming to the end of this chapter I hope you understood it and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I'll tell you what are the kind of questions that uh, usually come. These kind of keywords are very important to remember. What is lenticular transpiration? What is cuticular transpiration? What is stomatal transpiration? What is the process by which the stomata open or stomata close? You understood that, isn't it? When photosynthesis happens, there is uh, sugar that's created, there are salts that are there, uh, the, uh, it absorbs water and it expands and therefore the inner layer because it is thick, it is able to open up like this and there is a stoma that is formed. So stomata is the most important form of transpiration, then the uses of transpiration, how to measure transpiration, the potometers and the different types of potometers as well, that is something that you must remember, how to measure the amount of water that is drawn by the plant. You cannot measure how much goes out uh, through that potometer, again on potometer, but you can absorb, uh, you can, um, you can kind of calculate how much of water uh, intake is there by the plant because of the uh, transpiration and that is what you will measure. So the instruments that are used to measure what is transpiration, what are the instruments that are used, what are the types of transpiration, what is the use of transpiration, what is the significance of transpiration in the larger climate debate itself. And what are the other ways in which water conserves, uh, the plants conserve water? And what are the other ways in which plants lose water? Meaning, guttation and bleeding. Conserve water, the adaptations that it has in the form of a thick cuticle or smaller leaves and so on. Significance, what are the, uh, uh, you know, it, it is a reason for a lot of water vapor and therefore causing rains in the forest. So, this is quite a simple chapter. I hope uh, you enjoyed watching it. We will be back with a lot more on lot more lessons of biology thank you so much for watching have fun